Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I want to thank Mr. Miller and, and your team for being here. I, I, as I've said before, I know your worlds are, are very busy and we appreciate your time. Um, Mr. Miller, it seems like you and I've had this conversation too many times over the last few months with a serious outbreak in Northern Saskatchewan. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about or ask you a little bit about another serious outbreak we have this time in the Athabasca region and particularly the, the Fond du Lac community where on a call I was on yesterday, they had 49 active cases and 233 people on their on their contact list. Um, to add to that, they have a, a very significant water treatment plant issue where they had some issues or, or a breakdown in some pumps and whatnot with their water water plant. And obviously in a flying community, that's putting the the frontline health workers and, and just the whole community at, at a pretty significant risk when they're you know trying to do swabs and make health calls. And, and at the same time, they can't wash their hands in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I also had the opportunity to discuss this with the uh, vice chief of the PA Ground Count, Grand Council yesterday. And, uh, and, and we were on a conference call with, with the people from these communities yesterday. And you could just hear the desperation in their voices. You could hear the, 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 the trouble that they're experiencing. So um, I, I guess my question is pretty simple, actually. What, what specific actions, what, what is the department doing to provide the leadership of this community or these communities, the healthcare workers, and, and just the people in these communities with the help they need, like, right away? Thank you, Chair, through you, Gary. This is, uh, thank you for your invitation, and I do thank you for, for the briefings that you took with, with my team. Uh, to keep you up to date in real time about what is going on. And again, I'm, uh, I'm willing personally to do it. Um, if you reach out, I, I did have a chance to speak to Chief Louis Mercury yesterday uh, to ensure that he was getting the service that, uh, that, uh, that, that was due in, in this time of crisis. And he identified a number of issues. I mean, and the ones you, you identified, particularly uh, the shutdown of the water services is, is, is exceedingly alarming uh, for the reasons you mentioned. There are ways uh, to work around it, but it, you know it's obviously unacceptable that this is 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 the status quo. Um, there were talks about some pieces that would have taken a little longer to get into the community. Um, we've accelerated that in particular uh, in relation to the pump and the and the service of the of the plant. Um, up up to now, uh, we're we're confident that it is either been in the community today. Um, or uh, be in tomorrow with uh, with work being done to make sure that that water comes back on. We've been assured that they do have enough water, and we've been sure that they've had supplies of water um, shipped into the community. Uh, that's key, uh, but also the pandemic response. And um, part of, you know, as you as as you've alluded to, part of uh, part of tracking down COVID is ensuring that those people that you're doing contact tracing are contact tracing on are done in in in, in very very short delay, or else you just expand the number of people. That uh, positive cases are in contact with. So um, we are hopeful that not all those uh, 200 plus cases will be positive, but we can't uh, take anything for granted. So as part of that, we are assisting in enhanced PPE, um, enhanced resources. Uh, we will. We, the the chief recently expressed concern with respect to food security. We've deployed uh, some financial resources to assist with that on an immediate basis. Um, our teams are, are working around the clock in those communities that are affected. And, and sa sadly, MP Vidal, I, 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 I suspect that these conversations that you and I will be having on that response will continue. Um, we're not through this second wave by any stretch of the imagination. And if you look at the numbers that I put in an in introduction, um, that identified an in introduction, they're essentially four times the total numbers that were affected, that affected Indigenous communities in the first wave. So this is hitting Indigenous communities hard. Um, and the role that I have, along with other ministers in government, is to deploy resources and funds as quickly as possible and allow communities to implement those pandemic response plans that they've been so good at implementing up to now. Thank, thank you. I, I, I wanna ask you just a couple of really quick questions because time flies here in our, in our six minute segments. Um, is there actual adequate testing machines and supplies in this community to do the rapid testing and are they getting the results back uh, as you know, in, in a very quick manner? Um, you know, things could all, always be more expedient, but we do have, uh, we have deployed uh, resources into the community. Um, I would, if Valerie Gideon's on the line, I'll perhaps allow her to talk about the specific assets in the communities at this time. If you would, Ms. Gideon, just, just quickly, please. I, I really want to get to some other things. Yes, no, absolutely. I think we are uh, ensuring that they have the necessary supplies and access to testing. Um, and you know we've been, we've so far provided over three million dollars, and we'll continue to provide support to the community as is needed.